Yes. Keep her and her family in your prayers. Yes. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. But she had been asking us to pray for his salvation. And we are grateful to God because he accepted Christ before yes. he transitioned. Amen. Amen. So God is still a miracle worker. Yes. Yes. Still a promise yes. keeper. Yes. Amen. Even in death. Yes. Amen. He still did what he said he would do. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all for uh, being here on last Sunday. Thank you to everyone who rushed to throw something up on the wall or throw a tablecloth on the table and spread some gold stuff on the table to make the party come forth. We just want to say thank you from the very bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Celebrating with him on last weekend. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if you missed last Sunday's message, really I could just turn a projector on and replay it and let Minister uh, Teacher Louie preach to you from last Sunday because the word was amazing. Oh, yeah, amen. amen. I said the word was amazing. Yeah. You were here. Amen. And when uh, Willie's, Minister Willie's surprise luncheon was over, we left. And I said, I'm not ready to go home yet. I want to go to another service. And we went to a friend's church. And the exact message that Teacher Louie preached was being preached there. I mean, almost verbatim, even with some of the examples that he used. The same examples were being used. So I just thank the Lord for confirmation of his word. Amen. And even this morning while I was on my exercise bike, amen, I glanced at Facebook for a moment. And the message that the Lord gave to me, uh, Sarah Jakes, there's a video going around from yesterday, eight hours ago, of her preaching the same message. So God always confirms his word. I'm sure all the preachers would understand that. Amen. God Amen. confirms his word. Yes. But turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We thank God for Brother Julian and Sister April. They've been traveling for the past two weeks, but they'll be back next Sunday. Yes. Sister Whitney has been in class for the past month, but she will return in the first, first Sunday of September. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 5. Amen when you have it. So here's some zippers and pages. Amen. Amen. We're going to move. Amen. Coming from the King James Version this morning. And it reads, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, Amen. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts in itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought Thoughts. to the obedience of Christ. Yes. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Unfortunately, many are using the weapon of their flesh, the weapon of their emotions, to fight in this battle. And if you've got a little bit of salvation, everybody is in warfare right now. Somebody is going through something. Yes. Everybody that you talk to, if you ask them if they need prayer, they, they've got a list, come on, of, of this and that that's happening in their world. But the Father has equipped us with his word to be able to fight with. Amen. He has given us a tool. Hallelujah. And that tool is the word of God. Yes. In this war, you cannot fight with your flesh. Yes. Come on. Guns and knives and in, in uh, chairs <laughs> in Alabama won't do it. Amen. Look, that's a little joke for you. Amen. You're going to have to have the word of God. Amen. And you won't always have this tangible Bible. So he said for us to hide his word in our hearts so that we would not sin against him. And, and many of us are have, have haters and people who are jealous or have this or that ought against us. And some of us feel that way about other people. But we're in the wrong headspace because he clearly states that the weapons of our warfare, the tools of our warfare, they are not carnal but that they are mighty through God. I feel Jesus already. Through the pulling down of strongholds. 
And it's a sad thing, Jason, to be in a war, a, a literal war, okay, and have your weapon on your hip and stand there and not use it. Who am I talking to? Go ahead. We have been equipped with the weapon to fight in this war, but we keep our weapons on our hip and don't pull it out to utilize it. Glory be to God. And our weapon is the word of God, the spoken word of God. The enemy yes, fights yes, us yes. and instead of us using the tool that the Father has equipped us is equipped us with, which is the word of God through the through the the blood of Jesus, through the utilization of your mouth of speaking the word, we sit and we're silent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we cry about it and we whine about it and we talk to everybody who has nothing to do with it versus going to the source who has the power to fix and change our situation. The person on your job that's messing with you, baby, it's not them that's messing with you. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Come, Come on. on. Come it's on. a principality. It's an unbodied spirit. And I told you at, at Rock of Truth a few weeks ago that we have been recommended for this. The enemy simply wants to wear you out. Yes, he sir. wants yes, to yes. make you tired yes. to the point that you don't have energy to pray. You don't have energy to worship. You don't have energy to talk to the Lord. You don't have energy to praise. Come on. No, and so no, then no, we no, come no. into the building and we feel downtrodden and tired. And come on, evangelist says, lift your hand and your hand barely goes up. She says, come on, tell the Lord, thank you. And it's a, it's a mere whisper. Come on, because the enemy has been beating you down so much. Come on. But he told us that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not the happiness of the Lord, but the joy of the Lord, because happiness can change from one second to another. But the joy of the Lord, come on. It, it, it doesn't flip flop like a fish. Come on. It's, it's constant. Come on. It never fails us. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. The weapons of your warfare are not fleshly. Come on. The weapons of your warfare are not fleshly. The weapons that you have been equipped with are spiritual weapons. Can I talk in here? He has equipped you with spiritual weapons. He has equipped you with salvation. He has equipped you with regeneration. He has equipped you with the power and the activity of the Holy Ghost. He has equipped you with speaking in tongues. And if you don't have the gift of tongues, it has already been gifted to you. You have to pray for the activation Amen. because that is a part of your warfare. Amen. 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 You, you go into God speaking in English and that's wonderful. But well, baby, glory be to God. Sometimes your heavenly language has to produce what the demonic realm can't understand. So you're trying to fight demonic realms in a fleshly realm and it's not going to work. You've got to tap into the source and the source is Jesus. Come on. The source is what he left back for you. He says, behold, I will not leave you comfortless, but I'm going to send back a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Tell your neighbor, you have to have the Holy Ghost. It, it is a necessity. You need the Holy Ghost more than you need water. You need the Holy Ghost more than you need, hallelujah, air to breathe. The Holy Ghost will keep you. The Holy Ghost will fight for you. The Holy Ghost will fight through you. Tell somebody else, baby, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost because the weapons of your warfare are not fleshly. Right. It is spiritual. Yes, it is. And so you have to fight a spirit with a spirit. Yeah. What spirit are you? What spirit are you holding on to? What spirit is working within you that you're utilizing to fight against the enemy? It has to be the spirit of Christ. You can't fight
fight with your emotions. Come on. Tears, yeah, that's a good thing. He told us in Psalm 56 that he bottles them up. But maybe you've got to have more than tears because the enemy will make you cry and snot up and fall all over the floor and you'll still get up defeated. Come on. You'll still walk out of here with the same problem that you walked in here with. But when you've got the Holy Ghost, when you have been empowered, come on, when you have been endowed with the power of the Holy Ghost, it doesn't matter what it seems like. doesn't come matter on, what on. it looks like. doesn't matter what it feels like. Come on. I might look tired. I might feel tired. But in my mouth is the word of God. Out of my Ooh. mouth is what I speak. The word of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why when you ask me how you doing, I can say it is well. Hallelujah. I can say that all is well. I can say that, I can say that I'm blessed. And highly favored because it doesn't matter what I'm going through. Yes. My fight is not with flesh and blood. My fight is with the enemy. Come on. And you are not my enemy. Tell somebody, you are not my enemy. You are not my enemy. No, sir. No, sir. That's it. That's it. Amen. Weapons. We're confusing our weapons. They talked about you, so now you want to talk about them. That's the wrong weapon. Right. Yeah. They don't speak to you, so you determine not to speak to them. That's the wrong weapon. Yeah. You're using a fleshly weapon. Are you following me? Your weapon has to be spiritual, and your weapon has to be godly spiritual. Come on, because there are demonic spiritual weapons, too. Your weapon has to be godly spiritual spiritual weapons. Whatever you do to me that's negative, come on, we don't do energy. We don't match energy in the kingdom. Whatever you do to me, I'm going to give you godly spiritual weapons. That's what I'm using. Tell somebody you got to fight with the word of God. You, you got to fight with the word of God. And, and the problem is we don't know the word. That's why we can't fight with the word. And so we walk around defeated and we walk around as if victory doesn't belong to us. When he already granted us victory over 2,000 years ago. But you've got to take it back. How do you take it back? You can't go down thousands, millions of, of, of feet into the earth, into hell, and take it back. You've got to take it back with your mouth. Yeah. You've got to use your mouth yeah. to speak the word of yeah. God. This is your weapon. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. But most of us don't even pick up our weapon. Come on. Come on. Help us. Come on. Help us. For most of us, our Bible hadn't felt our fingertips all week. Until we got here this morning. And if your Bible is on your phone, the app on your phone hadn't seen you since last Sunday. Come on. Because you're not using your weapon. Yeah. And, and you're wondering why you get beat up. Come on. Enemy knocking you upside your head because you don't have an internal weapon. See, if, if they come and get rid of all of the Bibles, I'm still equipped. I'm still equipped. I, I still got my weapon. Weapon. I've got a weapon that you cannot disarm from me. Come on. Lewis was in the military. He knows about this arming. This weapon, you can take this and I can still preach everything that I need to preach. Because see, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. The weapon is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And we use our mouths as weapon in such ugly ways. Amen. Amen. We will tear folks' names down as a weapon. Yes. Come on, when he talks about murdering your sister and your brother, it's not about slitting their throat or, or shooting them. It's with that mouth. We just, we tear folk down. We tear folk down. And then we want to come and greet them and hug on them and say, oh, they acting different. Yeah, because they got the Holy Ghost and they already heard. Oh, Jesus. In their spirit. Yes. They already heard what you said. They already felt. Yes. Because the weapon are not fleshly. They're yes. spiritual. And so you can't hide oh, anything from the Holy Amen. Ghost. I got somebody. Yes. He's yes. even yes. the revealer of yes. all yes. things. Yes. Come on. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And see, we like to take that for just wearing any old thing. No, but baby, God looks at the mess in your heart, too. So that means, even though I'm dressed up while I have on my hat and my nice little two-piece suit and my, my little not white stockings and my white shoes and my nice big white pocketbook or just all white, okay, sis? And I'm looking real sanctified, looking real evangelistic, okay? Yeah, look at all of that. And so you judge me based off of that and you say, oh yeah, she, 
Yes, 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 yes. She yes. got the oil. She real sanctified because you're judging my outward appearance. But then God taps in and pulls back the layers of all that white, and He yes. sees all the filth Woo! and all the dirt Jesus. of my heart. See, we we manipulate Scripture Jesus. to fit our circumstance, but manipulation is witchcraft. Y'all don't want me to talk in here. Manipulation is divination. You've got to use the word for what the word was meant for. Come on. It cuts like a two-edged sword. It comes to divide and conquer. It comes to pull out everything that is not like God. What type of weapon are you using? Yes, 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 yes. He says we pull down every stronghold. In order for something to have been pulled down, it had to have been lifted up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I I can't pull down this rug because the rug is already there. But if I needed to pull down the covering of this bed, I can pull it down because it's already in a lofty place. Come on. Some version says lofty. It's already in a high place and needs to be pulled down. Some of us have elevated our carnal weapons, our fleshly weapons, to a high place. These strongholds, these things that come to hold you captive, they have elevated even above your head and and now he told you that you have to pull it down. And you saying, oh, Jesus, I need you to pull down these strongholds. And he said, mm -mm, I'm not pulling down nothing. He said, because I already told you that the weapons of your warfare are not fleshly, but mighty through God, through you pulling down. Hallelujah. You pulling down the strongholds. Strongholds is a place that has been fortified to protect it against attack. Strongholds is a place that has strength or power that is greater than average or expected. So a stronghold is something that has been set up in the demonic realm against you. And that stronghold has been built up that your warfare against it won't penetrate it. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Don't get distracted, please. The, the, the stronghold that is built up against you has built itself up so that your attack against it won't penetrate it. That's it. Yes. You ever, well, unless she was in the military or the police force, if, if you wear the bulletproof jacket, that is a, a, an example of a stronghold. Yes. It is built so that other bullets, other weapons yes. won't yes. get through it. And this is what the enemy has done. Because see, remember, he imitates everything that God does. Yes. So God's weapon is the word and the blood of Christ, Amen. right? So that the enemies, his attacks are strongholds, things that go against the knowledge of God. His, his attacks are sickness, mental sickness, physical sickness, poverty, come on, uh, uh, sin, whatever his attacks are, he has built it up in such a way that when you say, oh, please, Mr. Devil, get off my back, he's just standing there looking at you like this, girl, please. Amen. Come on. Come on, Elder. I've been at True Light Healing Deliverance Ministries for the past 16 years. The devil is a liar. He's saying, okay, only if you make me one. Amen. Amen. Because yes. I said that you You're was going to fornicate last night and you You're did, so That's maybe right. I'm not a liar after all. That's what the devil is saying. Oh, Jesus. Am, am I talking good, Jason? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, you, yeah, you said that, uh, I said that you was a gossiper and you said I was a liar, but you sure was on the phone. Amen. I said it last come night, on, so maybe I'm not a liar after all. Yes. And so you you just on your knees, you don't use a whole box of Kleenex because you so deep. You got your little prayer talent on your shoulder, your little blue and white prayer. You just going in a ta -ta -ta, and you doing all this. And the devil's like, yeah, I'm still standing. You ain't Amen. knocking nothing down because you got all this sin yeah, wrapped up on. in you. So your weapons oh, are just oh, fleshly. Oh. Ain't no spirit to your weapons. I don't even need to hide. I don't need, yes. I don't even need to go in get my little demons and stuff to come and help me I can take you out of my own because you ain't got no power Powerless. you got some rehearsed tongues That's right. come on. in a messy life yes. right. you don't fast you only pray when something is going wrong. So what weapons are you bringing to me? Lord, yes, right. So you doing all this stuff, done messed Where up your new lace front, done sweat it out, and the enemy, enemy just standing there like, hey, y'all boy got some Cheeto? I'm hungry. Let me watch this. Yeah, she's, oh, them tongues sound real good. They sound deep, too. She should do that in church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, you see that jerk? That jerk was nice. She should, she should jerk just like that in church. I like that. That jerk was good. But you ain't moving nothing. 
Come on. Enemy still there. Still there. Still wreaking havoc in your life. Because there's no power. Because your weapons are fleshly. That's it. That's it. Your weapons, hallelujah, have to be godly, spiritual. Your weapons have to be the word of God. And a part of your weapon is your life living. A part of your weapon is your life living. You fight with holiness. You fight by how you live. You fight by how you treat your brethren. This is how you fight your battles. We are not, remember, we are not generational cur curse breakers. We are generational curse destroyers. And so we destroy generational curses, not only by speaking in tongues and reading the word and praying, but by how we treat each other. We destroy generational curses by simply not recycling our experience. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Don't recycle your experience. Don't cause your child and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren and your great great grandchildren to recycle your experience. Come on. Grandmama got pregnant at 15. The mama got pregnant at 14. The granddaughter got pregnant at 15. The great granddaughter got pregnant at 16. And the cycle continues because nobody said, I'm not going to be like them. I'm going to do something different. And that becomes your warfare. Because when you destined in your mind that they did this, but I'm going to do that, this is when warfare shows up. So just what you like knocks on your door. Just what you like rings the doorbell. Just what you like dials your number. Just what you like sends an inbox on Facebook and down here's your warfare because you've got to say no and not recycle. Not recycle the experience. See, we want to be so deep in church and we want to speak in tongues and run around the church and fall out on the floor and our wig slides and all this stuff. And, and, but we go home to the same old mess. Because the warfare was not godly spiritual. It was carnal. Your warfare was fleshly. But it is only mighty, not through you, not through your education, not through your tithes. It's only mighty through God. By the pulling down of strongholds. We pull down sickness. We pull down poverty. We pull down backbiting. We pull down jealousy and envy. We pull down haughty and prideful spirit. We pull these things down. Amen. Come on. It's not something that you can see with your natural eye. It's in the spiritual realm. But when you have a heart of worship and you go before the Lord in prayer and in worship, he shows you the spots on your heart. It is like a Dalmatian or a polka dot outfit. He shows you those little black dots that needs to be washed white as snow. Those transgressions that he needs to blot out for you. He shows them to you first so that you can deal with them first. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. So we like to say, Lord, forgive me. For the sins that I know about oh. and the ones I don't know about. No, he has to tell you the ones you don't know about. Because if you don't know about them, you're still going to recycle your experiences. So you have to know. Your pastor has to rebuke you. The people on the front line, we have to rebuke you. Because if you don't know that you're doing wrong, you will recycle the experience. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's right. But mighty through God, no, through the so pulling so down so of so strongholds. So when was the last time you looked in the mirror and, and looked, you said self, and self said whom, and you said girl, yeah, you, you got, you know, you got an issue with this thing. You got an issue with your mouth. You need to fix that. You need to yeah. be silent a little more because your mouth has been running rampant. And girl, you know, you got an issue with this person. You need to ask God to fix that. And girl, you know, you got an issue with spending too much money shopping on Timu. Amen. You need to ask God to fix that. And, 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 and so he'll reveal to you what you need to change. Amen. 
I just saw all of y'all saying you need to be at the altar for Timu. I'm right here with you. you. But he shows you what you need to change. Because see, we got a built-in fund that we've got to work towards. And that $100 you spend it on Timu, and then on Sunday when I say, do you need an envelope for this, this the $1,000 towards the building fund, your hand can't go up because you just spent it elsewhere. But if we use more discipline and be a good steward of what he gives us. See, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Oh, come on. You won't remember this scripture today, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. It's not a, now that's a stronghold you can see. All you gotta do is take your finger and hold it on that strong app and delete it off your phone. Amen. It's simple. But the stronghold starts right here. The mind. Because what if there's a sale? What if there's something that I need? You don't need it. You without it right now. That's right. So you just want it. That's right. Strongholds, generational curses. Me and Minister Willie spoke about marriages on, on Wednesday night and, and dealing with insecurities. And some of us still have to go back to where it started. You've got to find that little girl in you. You've got to find that little boy in you. The one that was cheesed on the monkey bar. The one that was picked on on the seesaw. The one whose uncle said, boy, you just like your daddy. You're, you're, you're going you're to be ugly just like your daddy. You ain't going to be nothing just like your daddy. And you was two. You was three. You've got to go back and find that person yes, and say be healed. Yes, Amen. Yes, you got to go find that childhood picture and look at that child and prophesy to that child and say what you went through at five years old will not haunt me now at 47 years old. Amen. That's you will not taunt me with that memory anymore. I pulled down that strong hope. I am fearfully and wonderfully made because of most of the people that picked on you in your childhood ain't worth nothing now. Amen. Can I throw this mic? Amen. You look better than them now. You got more money than them now. Your house is bigger than theirs now. They catching the bus and you driving. Come on. You passing them at the bus stop and you go toot toot. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Oh. Yes, Lord. The, tell somebody the same ones. But you letting what they said to you, what they did to you, their absence to you affects you now 30, 40, 50, 60 years later. That's a stronghold that has to be pulled down. And here's the thing, what affects you does not only affect you, it affects those who surround you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It affects your spouse. Come on. It affects your children. It, it affects your parents. It affects your siblings. It affects your church family. I, I look back over the years with some of the people that have been here, still here, and some that have gone. And now that my discernment is sharper and I've studied some things, I'm like, hmm. That was something that they were dealing with. Maybe they wouldn't mean, after all, that little girl, that little boy in them needed to be dealt with, and we didn't know how. Oh, that's real. That's real. Amen. Amen. Help us. Y'all quiet. Y'all yes. quiet. Help us. You've got some stuff in you that has to be pulled down and out. Till somebody pull it down and out. Because see, I can pull the dirt from out of this bit. But if I just leave it right here on the floor, if you got allergies, you're going to be sneezing. So after I pull some stuff down, I've got to get it out. Tell somebody, pull it down and take it out. You can't pull it down and then want to hold on to it. We want to pull stuff down and save it for a rainy day. No, no, no. You got to pull down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and send it out. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. He says we cast down every imagination that exalts itself yes. against the knowledge of God. If it goes against the knowledge of God, then it goes against you. If it goes against the knowledge of God, it goes against Jeremiah 29 and 11 for your life. For he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. You're not going to reach the expected end if you are compacted with strongholds. If you are bound by strongholds. That's it. That's it. That's real. Amen. Strongholds. He gave it that name for a reason. Because it's strong enough to hold oh, you down. That's good. That's good right there. That's good. Yeah. It's strong enough to hold 
you down if your weapon is carnal. If your weapon is fleshly. Tell somebody you better fight with the word. You better fight with the word. Jeremiah 1 10. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Glory be to God. 1 and 10. 1 and 10. 1 and 10. That's good. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, God. Yes. He said, see? That means look, behold, uh -huh. pay attention to, understand that I have set this day, that I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms yes. to root out, uh -huh. to pull down, so. and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Uh -huh. yeah. See, we took this as just being the prophet. But you are the prophet in your own house. You are the prophet of your own life. Yes, and he yes, has sir. given you the power to root out mm -hmm. and to pull down, uh -huh. to tear down, right. and to build up, and to plant. Yes. He has empowered you to do it, but what are you doing with it? Correct. Yes. Come on. What are you doing with it? We want to build buildings and everybody flipping houses and, and buying cars and investing in property. And that's all well and good. But your spiritual life, what are you rooting out and tearing down? What are, what are you doing to be better? I want to be better today than I was yesterday. What are you doing to make that happen? What is your strong? Is your stronghold your friends? You get around your friends and all of a sudden you revert back to who you said you weren't going to be. Is your stronghold your family? You get around them and all of a sudden you're doing the same thing you said you weren't going to do. That's a stronghold and, and they, they don't have to be destroyed. You have to destroy your thought process regarding them. Yes. Amen. Your thought That's process exactly. regarding them has to change. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. I'm almost finished. Uh -huh. Ephesians, Ephesians. Ephesians. If you get it, read it for me. What I'm trying it? to get there. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Yes. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Amen. One and four, you said? I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 4. I've got it. Thank you so much for trying for me. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with how many spiritual blessings? All of them. All spiritual blessings, not in demonic places, but in heavenly places in Christ. I'll read it again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according to as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes. Everything that you need to fight is already within you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, don't, you don't need to have a meeting with me at church to ask me about the, the gifts. You don't need to have a meeting with Pastor on Wednesday night to say, how can I get these gifts? He's already blessed you. Blessed, ED, it's done over 2,000 years ago. It's already in you when you get in prayer, when you get in praise, when you get in worship in your personal time, not just corporately, those gifts will be revealed to you. You'll be able to fight with your heavenly language. You'll be able to use the word with power. You won't be having no little weakling prayer. Uh, all right, go on now, sick devil. Go on, go on now, leave me alone, little devil. No, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. The blood of Jesus stands up against you. I command you by the power of God invested in me to take your hands off of my daughters. Take your hands off of my sons. Take your hands off of my marriage. Take your hands off of my church. Take your hands off of my job. We don't beg and plead with devils. We command devils. We don't run from devils. We run devils away from us. We're not scared of devils. Devils are afraid of us. When you open up your mouth, the devil should be trembling, saying, Oh boy, what's she going to say now? What's she, gonna, what's she about to do now, Genesis? Because I've gotten enough of it. Come on, you should make the devil afraid of you. That's it, that's it right there. Yes, sir. But we sitting here scared and trembling in our boots. My God. 
had an encounter this week after Minister Carpenter got out of prayer. I, I was I was I was listening to the prayer and fell asleep. And when I woke up, I had an out of body experience where I saw him come into the room and he stood over the bed and he looked angry. And he's standing over the bed and something comes into the bed, lifts up the cover, lays on me and covers in my mouth. Jesus. And he's standing in the room. But it wasn't him. He was in the house, but it wasn't him. And I was awake. I said, the blood of Jesus. The blood. The blood. Get your hands up. You know, who gave you permission to touch me? You he said, touch my anointing and do my prophet no harm. That means flesh or spirit. Who sent you here? You don't get to come here. Who allowed you to come into 1523? No, 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 baby. We didn't open no door for you. You got a legal entrance in here. You got to go. You got to get out of here. Go back to hell where you came from. And I didn't lose no sleep. That's right. I saw my blanket go back down and I pulled it up and went right back to snoring. Amen. And got up when I was supposed to get up. Yes. When he did come in the room, he said, you all right? I said, I'm good. He said, how'd you sleep? I said, great. Amen. Right. Told him later while I was getting dressed. I said, oh yeah, I had this, this thing that happened this morning, but I'm good now. Because yeah. <laughs> see, we've got power. we got power. We can tread upon serpents. Yeah. We can eat any deadly thing and it would not harm us. But the key is, you've got to have the word and you've got to walk blameless. You've got to walk holy. Yeah. Otherwise, the devil just going to make a mockery of you. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, and I'm finished. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Mm -hmm. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm coming. I'm coming. I know. Yes. Finally, Finally yeah. last scripture for this morning. Finally, yeah. my brethren, uh -huh. be strong, in the Lord. not in yourself, in the Lord. not in your church, yes, in not the in Lord. your family, not in your friends, but be strong in the Lord. Amen. Come on, and in the power of not your might, yes. but his might. Uh -huh. You see all of this dependency that we have to have on him? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he tells us, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. That's the, tri the trickery, the schemes, the plots of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But come on, Shonda, but against principalities and unbodied spirit. Don't you be the unbodied, don't you be the body that the principality is using. That's right, that's right, that's right. Don't be that body. That's right. Come on, don't, don't be that body. Don't be the one that the enemy says, oh yeah, there's a portal. There's an open portal. We can yeah. get in right there. Mm -hmm. They yes, hadn't sir. been praying. There's yes, a portal. Yes, they, sir. They, they, hadn't, they hadn't read this week. I see a portal. We can get in right there. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they think you're negative. There's a portal. Mm -hmm. we, we can get in. You see that little creek right there? Because see, Genesis tells us that sin crouches at your that's door. Yeah, it's yeah. just waiting for an entrance. And many yes. of us, we just open, we don't even let it crouch. We just open the door and say, come on in. Amen. Yeah, got a seat for you right there in the corner. You want some, you want some cheesecake? You want some coffee? Stop giving the devil a seat at your table. That's it, that's it. He doesn't deserve to be in your house. He don't pay no rent. Amen. He don't pay no mortgage. He don't pay no bills. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Yes. He said, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. stand. Yes, sir. Yes. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Stop walking around lying. And exaggerating is still a lie. Yep. Withholding information is still a lie. Well, you didn't ask, yes, yes, yes. so I didn't tell, so you lied. Yes, That's what you did. And having on the breastplate of righteousness uh -huh. and your feet shod with the preparation uh -huh. of the gospel of peace uh -huh. above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench, Fire put out, breathe uh -huh. <laughs> upon, Throw water on all the fiery darts 
of the wicked yes, yes, and yes. take the helmet of salvation yes. and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit that means speaking in tongues speaking in your heavenly language for those of you saying it's 2023 and we don't need that you've got to be able to pray in the spirit I don't care how young you are I don't care how old you are yeah. you need the activation of the Holy Ghost you need the evidence of the Holy Ghost which is speaking in tongues and watching thereunto with all preservation and supplication for all saints. That means don't just pray for true light. Pray for all oh, saints. Oh, and right. pray for me. The utterance that the utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly. Oh, to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador right. yes, in yes, change. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes sir. That therein I may speak boldly. Mm -hmm. As I ought to speak. Yes. Yes. Everybody stand. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. What kind of weapon are you using? What kind? Help us, help us, Lord. What yes. kind of weapon are you using? Amen. Praise God. Oh, uh, yes. Hallelujah. What kind of weapon are you using? You've got to pull it out. It can't.